Hello, everybody, and welcome to our review of Esham's K- 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 Kill the Fetus. My Happy name, October. My name is HSR. I am your lady friend, Bonnie. And uh, before we jump into that, we're going to just do some housekeeping. You can totally skip that by looking in the description of the video to mm-hmm, see when mm-hmm. it all starts. And could we do not. Well, if you, if you could give me some space here. Um, <laughs> And we're going to start off just by giving a little bit of love to our patrons, you know, Linda Williams, Super Old School 1994, and it's Mel Gadamsey. We'll talk a bit about that at the end of the video. And uh, as we go along in this little discussion that we're going to have going through each track, sorry, the whole album track by track, mm-hmm. feel free to leave any comments along the way, correcting us, giving your thoughts, your yep, opinions, yep, all that yep. good shit. And uh, this week, uh, sorry, last week we talked about the Psycho Realm which is the name of the album, and the group is Psycho Realm. So it's kind of like the Psycho Realm. Anyway, uh, we got this really awesome comment from g 4 Nikus Rap. Man, I'm new in this rap thing, but when I started hearing the whole album and then the next ones, A War Story Book 1 and 2, I was wondering why they're not as famous as other hip-hop groups. Uh, people mentioned they got beats, sick lyrics, sick flows, isn't like... Uh, that enough. Anyway, Psycho Realm will always be one of my favorites, and Stone Guard will be one of my favorite song album ever, which is a pretty good song. Probably that song was dope as fuck with the spiritual shit in that raw side beat. P.S. When you heard Premonitions, did you understand what Duke said in Spanish? I'm just curious. Haha. <laughs> Respects from Spain. Always love the fact that people from other countries and shit that are not Canada Hola. watch us. <laughs> and so I. Uh, wait. Wait, no, wait, it's Spain. No, no, okay, I was right. It's, it's Spanish. <laughs> yes. um, so, like, I mean, the album was cool, and I actually agree with his comment. It is a bit weird that they're not more famous, but also I don't know that people are so open-minded to stuff with other languages in it in this continent that I live on, so I can see how maybe it got brushed over for other stuff. So I responded, and this well, is, maybe like, just because, like, everybody's eyes were on, like, Cypress Hill, and, like, meanwhile, like, you know, or, like, maybe they were off of Cypress Hill. Maybe, like, they'd had, like, their time or, like, you know, they weren't, weren't like, in well, the spotlight at the moment. I also believe part of it is that the Duke one was shot and this kind of fucked up their flow for a quick minute. And maybe yeah, they would have been a Yeah, I can imagine bigger. how that would happen. Um, but this is more than just one comment. So I responded with, I did not. Hablo un poquito espanol. But Google uh, Translate did the rest. I can read some of it. I can get the <laughs> gist of sentences. I can see your point, though. It's pretty great. But then this is the real winner of all the comments that I got on this video. Reviews, well, the next time you guys need to translate something in Spanish, I recommend you this translator, not Google Translate, Deeple.com. It's not as popular as Google Translator, <laughs> but it's so much better. See you Are in we your doing next free promo review. for them? This I, is not an ad. I just wanted to shout it out because that's, that's the kind of comment that like won in my eyes. It's like not only do we have a discussion – you're providing me with, like, the tools to deal with Spanish rap. And <laughs> that's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Um, anyway, so we're not really here to talk about that album or Spanish translators. There's no Spanish on this album. Why don't you introduce the album we already introduced that we'll be talking about this week? Well, uh, this week by request, I believe, right? It is, in fact, uh, derived from our Patreon. This is for uh, Super Old School 1994, who's patiently waited to see us cover something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So this week we are doing on his um, behalf, um, Isham k- 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 kill the fe- the fetus, and it's KKK like just to really drive it home. Yeah, and then this came out uh, June sixteenth, nineteen ninety three. So it's uh, you know the earlier years of hip hop, and uh, it's not his first album. I believe he's been around for a minute at this point. And he started quite young, like fifteen, I believe. And uh, I don't know that much about him, but I did see him live a couple of weeks ago so that was hmm. just random i went to see the insane clown posse on their great malenko tour and opener was isham and he came out with because he's also on. from uh, detroit yeah right? and they're kind of similar genres and i think th- they worked together at, at some point i read something about them like releasing something together well, I believe part of the reason this was requested is because uh, Super Old School 1994 was watching our Insane Clown Posse review. And there's at least one connection I made between that album and this album that I thought was really interesting. And he, I think it was kind of like, y'all should learn some history. And that's the point of this because we were there. 
And there are definitely some similarities between what the uh, ICP folks do and what Esham did here. And they kind of started around the same time, if I'm not mistaken. But there's one really interesting one I caught that I'll bring attention to later on. Hmm. Still, um, he comes out on stage, right? Now, I know this album cover, having looked into Esham a bit in the past and just his general reputation. But he comes out with like this regular ass like hat on and these regular ass rapper glasses on and this regular ass rapper outfit and does the most regular ass rapper <laughs> performance I've ever seen. And I'm like... And he's like, I'm just a regular guy. <laughs> yeah, and he was he was funny, right? Like he had nobody else with him. It was just him on stage. And so he kept making these references to his invisible DJ that was like performing with him. I'm like, it was a great set. Don't get me wrong. It was really pumped. I knew none of the music, so I couldn't really connect like that. But like he held it down and he was hilarious between songs and stuff. And it was really cool how he just owned that shit. Cool. But it was just... It's glad to see that he's, like, you know, still in it and still, like, enjoying, you know, what he does. Yeah, he's definitely active. I mean, if I saw him this year, a couple of weeks ago. Um, remind my... If, if I still have it, I'll put in, like, a little clip of that footage, like, now. <laughs> Anyway, so let's uh, talk about that album cover and the name of this album because I don't have a lot more to say except that according to everywhere on the internet, this is a seminal horrorcore album. And the word hmm. seminal is often used attached to this one. What does that word mean? I'm not 100% sure. You should, you should Google it with your – your magic computer. Let me see the, what the word. <laughs> you know, I should I should yeah, have googled no. that before this moment because <laughs> I just think it's funny. It sounds like semen, but it's not. It really isn't. Relating to or denoting semen. <laughs> is it really? <laughs> That's a definition too. Uh, the first definition is of a work, event, moment, or figure strongly influenced later developments. His seminal work on chaos theory. Blah 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 blah. Ah, okay. So something that is is working on so it's something that guys like icp listen to but also to do with semen simultaneously very good choice mm, of words and yet, excellent. especially when it's about like it's got the fetus well on he this cover. he like what calls his um from what i read on wikipedia um he calls his music acid rap right was so, that his label too or am um, i wrong about that i don't know I don't, let me see i can check that but right um there. Yeah, his style is definitely out there. I just, I'm a little bit caught up on this cover. His layer. label is a psych, uh, Psychopathic Records. No, that's just maybe and his real current life. leopard. Oh, real life. That was the label. Sorry. Acid rap is a genre. Sure. We might sound a little bit dumb right now. Sorry about that. But um, <laughs> yeah, I you guess might. that makes sense that he signed a psychopathic <laughs> if he performed with ICP. Anyway, um, yeah, his cover is fucking crazy. I mean, it's like a fetus face and shit inside of a uterus. It's just fucking graphic, right? Yeah. Like, it might be the most, the second most provocative album cover we've talked about on this channel. Uh, first, I'd have to say, is the Burning Buddhist Monk cover from Rage Against the Machine. This comes pretty fucking close because it's right out there. And then on the side, it's just kill the fetus yellow and Esham at the top. And. The album. <laughs> That's my favorite part is the little the album that appears on the side, like written upwards. And um, I don't know. It's from the first second I saw this cover years ago. I've never forgotten it. I've never forgotten the name of this title. I did dabble into listening to it once, but I don't remember it. So I don't really think it counts. But yeah, it's pretty like stand out, shocking. I mean, as far as shock music goes, that's what I'm expecting looking at this cover. Some yeah. shocking shit. I love it. I think it is really well executed. And I guess it's interesting to see him as such a normal dude now, having seen this shit like on this cover. For me, that was a bit weird, but I love I love it. That's all I'm trying to say. Hmm. Yeah, I mean well, I've I've never really heard of him or like listened to any of his music or anything like that. Um so this is definitely my like first experience in like his realm. Um, and I agree with you. The cover is quite shocking. I mean, it, it's like, you know, exactly what it is. It's like a fetus all like snug in like the, I don't know, embryonic sack. I haven't had a baby. I don't know all these terms. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I may or may not be right. But it sounds right. Um, so, yeah. And it's like, you know, you can see like the umbilical cord and like everything. It just looks like, you know, and it's obviously named like 
could, could, could kill the fetus. Um, and so, I mean, it's quite, you know, you, it is what it is. You assume that this baby's going to die or is dead or whatever. And, or that um, you should kill it. Or that you should kill it. Um, and also right away, it made me think of, like, obviously, it made me think of America Kaka. Um, it's most wanted. Yeah. Uh, the but, Ice Cube album. Yeah. With like the Kaka Kaka's. And I thought that was pretty cool. And I think that he like, I think he makes some like references to him as well. Fair enough. Um, yeah. So yeah, you brought us on a big quest here, Super Old School 1994. So mm-hmm. I ask you. What is evil? <laughs> uh, things that are vicious and things that are anti-human. And that, that somehow... I wasn't expecting a star like this. Like, hold up. J- just, like, it's like a bunch of, like, quotes and stuff laced from, like, old-timey TV. That's yeah. what it kind of sounds like. It sounds like a like a classroom, like, you know, because you hear, like, the bell of, like, a school, like, ringing uh, throughout. To me, that felt like, like a siren, like a, like, not like a siren, but like, like a, a fire alarm or a prison bell or something like that, just kind of grating bell going off, hmm. right? Interesting. Like an intense, dark bell. Like, it wasn't a happy recess bell. It was, like, a mean, scary prison riot bell, in my mind. Okay. And then, because you've also got that do 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 kind of, like, thumping intensified baseline and the, the baseline kind of comes in and out and there's, and there's some... like a clacking or like something like metallic that's like striking like a sound as well it's like i don't know i thought the beat was awesome it's really well executed and like the way it just kind of fades out there are definitely parts of this where it's just this talking over this siren and there's nothing else happening and it's really interesting but what's being said it's fucked up to me. The following program deals with controversial subjects and due to its explicit nature parental guidance is strongly advised cliche according fine but then when you really start thinking <laughs> about it the theories opinions and beliefs expressed are not the only possible interpretations the viewer is invited to make a judgment based on all available information so like the first thing you're hearing on this album on a song called what is evil is isham basically saying use your fucking common sense and make an informed decision about this shit don't just look at it at like face value and make your opinions like, think about it. Use that conscious mind you've been given to absorb information and shit. And I think it is so smart. And I was really impressed with this. And then it kind of, like, floats into this philosophical exploration of what evil is. And uh, most people agree that evil exists, blah, blah, blah. For some it's this, for some it's that. And then I love how it just flows from, like, this dictionary definition of evil directly into these various philosophical looks at what evil could be. And then like halfway through, it stops being like the first person's voice and it just becomes like a bunch of different stuff looking at stuff like human misery is not caused by some evil force, but by the stupid actions of being like something stupid or whatever. I couldn't hear it all. Um, Evil is a choice. Like it's just all these different ways of looking at it. Like it's not such a a black and white subject and when you really start to think about what is evil and you try to define it it's such a loaded question over this dark pulsating beat and like you just get this big it sets an atmosphere for what you're about to hear and it definitely says don't just think i'm a psycho right off the jump you know like at least i feel like if you're smart and you're listening to this no offense to anybody implied but if you're like really (laughs) critically thinking when you approach this kind of introduction it's meant to be like satire it's meant to be a certain thing it's kind of like a little bit of a warning this is going to shock you but really think about why i'm writing these songs you know that kind of an attitude is what i felt was given off so for me it's kind of like what Eminem did with his, like, this is a public service yeah. announcement, blah, blah, But, like, that and, was really... And, like, I, something else I read was that, obviously, like, Eminem was inspired by him. Seminal. Can we just go seminal every time we get inspired by this album? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, yeah, it, I feel like Eminem's is worse. I feel like this is a far better use of this intro because it really touches on some deep shit. Like, it's a really well-thought-out, well-researched look at evil in my opinion and i give it a four and a half on five it's a very strong introduction it might be one of the best introductions but yeah i think it's cool cool um so yeah i definitely thought it sounded more like um, a classroom bell when i heard it but i mean that's that's just me um you know obviously he's trying to figure out here like what is um what really is evil um and then he talks about like human beings have um kind of like have like the decision like to to be you know they have the choice where they can be evil or they can't be and it's based off of like what is surrounding us like our environment like what's happening in our world 
Um, I really like the beat on this one. It sounded like very like industrial and grimy, um, and it sounded very cool. I liked it, and I find I found that like it was um, the way that this song is placed and like written is um kind of like an essay the way it's like often you know like in the first paragraph mm. like it ends with like asking basically like the question you're trying to answer in your essay and so like that's kind of what i feel like he's trying to like answer in this you know on this album he's going to answer this question like what is evil um and he says you know ishima has uh, has basically done this by um asking what drives a person to the depths of evil so um, yeah, I mean, even though he's not featured on this song, I don't think, um, it's just like clips of like, you know, TV shows and whatever else. Um, I think it was really, really well done. I liked it. It, um, it was pretty cool. I gave it a 4.75. Well, let's discuss some symptoms of insanity. How do you feel about this one? Um, so this one just sort of seems to be his um, his like personal feelings towards um, his like mental struggles. Um, I think he's off, he's talking a lot about like suicide and he talks about like, you know, is he schizophrenic and he's questioning that. And that comes up, you know, a few times on this album. Um, so he he mentions it, which which is like, you know, an interesting way to kind of show his creativity. You know, it's a different, you know being a person who's schizophrenic, you know, they can see things maybe differently than us. And maybe that's why, like, his music is so, like, interesting to listen to, um, if that's true. Um, so in the second verse, he's talking about killing um, others' family and, like, dog and fetus and that he's, like, the black evil. So there's a lot a lot of, like, kind of crazy stuff that's going on in this song. Um, and he's basically uh, feels and is feels crazy, I think, basically, you know, because he's schizophrenic or he thinks he is. I don't know if he's actually diagnosed. Um, and so he's kind of struggling with, like, the voices in his head. And, like, that's kind of, you know, and obviously another symptom. And he's kind of saying that maybe he's insane and these are all his symptoms, basically, he's describing. Um, and then at the end of the song, we hear someone say, like, I can't take it anymore. And then, like, the sound of him shooting himself, one would assume. Um, and that's kind of how it ends. And so, I mean, it's good. It wasn't like as like as like the the first one, um, but I give it a four point two five. So like, there's a problem I have with this album and many songs, and it's maybe just my snobbery of being a millennial in 2018. <laughs> but like, I have a bit of trouble with the gritty mixing, and I probably know it's technological limitations of blah blah blahs, and there's a million great reasons for it, and it doesn't actually take away from the artistic value of what Esham has created, but it totally impacted my ability to enjoy the song. So just to put it in, there's a few of these tracks where like I feel like I would give it a higher grade. But what if you you had to put yourself it, in like the mindset of like someone in like 1993? I, I did. I don't though. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you have to like imagine I'm, listening to this I'm, on a cassette. I, that's why, like, I'm saying this now because I'm aware that I should take that into context. But in my I bet opinion, you on a cassette on like a crappy boombox, it would sound so good. Um, you know what? I bet it would sound like <laughs> gritty. And, it would sound really gritty. I feel like I'm spoiled perfect. in the era I grew up in, but I have a lot of trouble with the mixing of this era when it's not like top notch per se okay. um anyway but i love the fact that he's using allison chains's dirt for like the beat of this and that his sample choices are so fucking um interesting and i agree i i look at this like he's he's trying to explore like he's got all these symptoms and these cravings and these tendencies and these desires and these fucked up thoughts going on and i guess from his perception these are the symptoms of insanity he doesn't fully understand it but he's letting you know some of the crazy shit that goes on in his mind and just to like kind of prove the point and stuff and like it's really great flow and it's really excellent rapping like i was pretty surprised at how like much i really enjoyed this um like 
it's not like it's over the top even. It's like I'm coming back again and I'd rather be dead. I'm out of my mind so much I need a brand new head. The symptom of insanity has got me intertwined. Voices in my head playing tricks on my mind. You know, 13 ways to commit suicide. I'll do it. Raise you to my wrist. Someone asked me what I'm doing. I just want to die. I'd want to die. So please cut out my blood veins. Some may imply I'm insane. I mean, I just yeah. knew a lot of emo in the mid 2000s. So, like, it's not that far fetched for me to hear some shit like this. I mean, and like, I think it's an interesting, like, subject matter in general because, first of all, people should be talking about this stuff like it's a real thing. And I feel like he's putting it out there to shock you, but also to maybe, like, raise some awareness that, like, this is a real thing that some people feel. Like, he feels so fucking, I don't know, if I catch a slug in the head, I'm dead. I don't give a fuck. Who want to know? Who want to know where the bad guys go? Nine mil, aim to kill right between the eyes, bro. And then kill the fetus, kill the mama, kill the daddy, kill the dog, shoot them all up, shoot them all up, shoot them all up dead, y'all. And it's, like, a really extreme way to, like, look at maybe some of the more pressing themes and things that are going on inside of their environment. Like, if you really consider, if you're listening to a bunch of music that's like, kill them all, kill them all, do this, bang, 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 all the time, this is just taking that to a more direct and blunt level. And, like, I don't know what his exact intentions were with it, but I do feel that by making it so extreme and shocking, it almost makes it more of a conversation point. Okay. Kind of, kind of does what science fiction does with a lot of these themes. Like it's so exaggerated that now we can actually have a conversation about it, which I, th- I like that angle that he he's taken with this. It like, it's cool to me, and it's pretty fucking well done. Um, I really, really do. Yeah, I, I noticed he says he spells out unholy a lot. I guess at the time that was something a moniker or something he was going under. Um. But I like the overall sense of it, like crucifix, triple six, Isham's back into funky myths, live after life, life after death, tell them what's left, I'm holding my breath, insanity, symptom, symptom, insanity. The way he does that, like, flippy thing with the words, he does it a lot on this album, and I really like that flow thing, and I can see how that was seminal to the way certain other rappers in the late 90s was bouncing around from Detroit and using these kinds of rhymes, syllables, sound combines to blow off to the next level, just saying. Um, I enjoyed this. I really, I, I, I enjoyed the song, but I gave it a 4.25 because like, as much as I love the artistic merit of it and all of that stuff, it's a, it's a little bit hard to listen to. And maybe that's part of the point, but I feel like with like a, a remastered version of this would be like fucking bless. Um, I don't know. That's all I gotta say about that. Let's go check out Running From Me. Goodness gracious. It gets to the end of this song. And it's the fucking suicide hotline skit. Yeah. And then obviously ICP heard that and made their own version of it. So they were spoofing on this fucking skit. Oh. You see what I'm saying? Because it you, starts off. Did you off, not know that before this? No. But when I heard this, I was like, no fucking way. Because it starts off like exactly the boy. same way. And I'm like, okay, I could see how Violent J spoofed on that shit. Because in this one, it's like the guy hangs up and he kills himself or whatever. Yeah. So it's not like he talks to a goofy clown that's fucking with him or the great Malenko or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I caught that. Otherwise, how funky is this song? How funky is this flow? Very funky. How wicked styles is this shit? Because, um, you know, I caught a couple of things that may, ICP may have played with in this song. I'm just throwing it out. But, yeah, you like it? Um, yeah. I mean, it was kind of comical. In like, Well, I mean, at the end it was anyways. Um, so, basically, it starts off with, like, a cop or, like, someone like talking about uh, dealing with, like, Satan and his evil and, like, all these, like, crazy things that, like, happen and whatever. Like, it's really weird. And, um... <laughs> Anyways, and then I liked the lyrics, Funky's getting cut up into little chunks, put your dead body in the trunk with the pumps. <laughs> so that stood out to me. I don't know. It was just like random line, but I thought it was funny. Um, and like, so yeah, the end of the song made me laugh like a little bit because like, you know, this guy, he's basically, he's killed his family and then he like calls like the suicide hotline because he needs to talk to somebody and he says he's cut up his, you know, his wife and kids or whatever and she just like once like hold please or whatever and then like just disconnects the call 
And um, <laughs> like, it, it was kind of funny. I mean, it's ridiculous um, and funny from someone obviously not in his shoes. Um, but like, hopefully, like the people who are actually working at these kind of places, I have like a little bit more patience than uh, the lady who answered. Um, and then he basically says at the end, like, I'll just kill myself <laughs> because he would rather basically kill himself than deal with someone like her <laughs> or like someone that was going to give him like attitude because society is just like a bitch like that. <laughs> well, I mean, so he I called the suicide like... hotline after killing him and then he said he's going to kill himself after getting hung up on. No? Yeah. Yeah. But it sounded like he was almost like not like he was like, oh, I'm going to kill myself. It sounded like he was going to like just like the way he said it to me sounded like he was like. Might as well just kill myself, like, like kind of like in a funny way, just to, right. because he can't even deal with like people around him, and like even like the people who are like trying are there to help him, like disregard him. Yeah, it, no. it just seemed it like kind of sense. pathetic and kind of funny at the same time. Um, so, but it still sounded a little bit scary, like the overall feel of the song. Um, I give this one a four point two five on five. Um, I I'm okay with the intro part and the outro part. They're fun. I could live with them. I could live without them. But that middle part's excellent and pretty stellar. I love his rapping on this, that, like, really upbeat kind of shit. Like, lyrically, it's fine. He's just kind of flossing. But, like, going a little more extreme, like, come and deal with the real, the devil pack steel like this. Plus, I'm a suicidalist. God bless the child who gets buck wild with the wicked styles tearing the eyes. Kind of flows in. He keeps his rhyming really proper. I love the way he rhymes, the way he rhymes multiple words. And I love his upbeat kind of... Ch- you know, a little bit choppier flow, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just love how it kind of sounds like everyone else is hip hop in the sense of what he's saying, only he goes pretty fucking next level with his own niche of like being a little more extreme and crazy and actually making it sound a little crazier than the average person can pull off. But he does it like it's so nonchalant. Like he does it like he has all this swag with it. Like, yeah, I'm going to fucking kill myself while brushing my shoulders off. Like, and that's what I think is super interesting about his approach. That makes me really enjoy it. But then what he's saying is a little bit more extreme and a little bit more interesting because of that. So it makes it a little more of a pleasant song. I think the beat and everything about it is excellent, but I could live without the intro and outro. So I gave it a 4.25, but at the same time, I'm also very interested in Esham at this point. It makes me want to keep listening to shit on this album. And if we go a little quicker on some of these songs, you gave us a 23-song album to talk about, so it takes a while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> enjoy. Voices in my head. The matter, the sounds, the pit and patter. I'm losing my mind as I walk up Jacob's ladder. Can I- I think what makes this song kind of really cool and brilliant is also kind of to the detriment of this song is my basic feeling. So I I love the fact that he basically does the whole song, but the whole way through, you hear the voices in his head talking louder than him, telling him to like kill himself and things like that as he's going through it. Yep. You should just kill yourself. And it's like louder than him rapping. And it's to maybe like exemplify this is what it's like to be me or whatever, right? And from the art value, the artistic side of it, it's fucking next level. Yep. I got to give big props to the move. I don't like the execution. I feel like it kind of hurt my listening experience. But at the same time, I don't mind. Like I know it sounds a bit critical and a bit douchey maybe – but, like, I look at it from, like, the perspective of an enjoyable song. I did not enjoy that move. From the perspective of that. What do you mean? What are you talking about? What part? All the doubles of him, like, screaming oh, over okay. himself. Like, I feel like the verses were really solid, really interesting. But it's the called beats... Voices in My Head, so I feel like, it, like that's kind of, like, what it's supposed to be. I know. That's why I'm not, like, <laughs> I'm not criticizing, like, the artistic choice. That was really amazing to me, and it's really creative, and I've heard nothing like it before. On the other hand, I can see why this wasn't so seminal as some of the other moves he may have done on this album. Or maybe it is. I don't actually know. Sometimes I talk about my ass. And then you guys call me on it in the comments. So I'm trying not to do that. But that was my only grievance, but also amazement with this song, which put me at a really like mixed feeling. Rapping wise, it's fine. He references like 13 ways and still counting them down from his track, like 13 ways, I think. And which yeah, it's off of like a previous album, I think. And, you know, he hears voices in my head telling me to go ahead. Something in my mind says I'm better off dead. It seems like I'm drowning in my own conception. I'm my own worst enemy with no exception. Like, I really dig that shit. I'm not going to say that the subject matter, so sometimes it, it's similar 
song to song, but he manages to keep the flow nice and keep up individual nuances that like make it totally engaging. Like this, this one has a little bit more of a self reflection, a little bit more of I don't like it. He's like questioning if he should kill himself in a bit more of a direct way. Yeah. But at the same time, he's got the voices. He can't shut him up, telling him to go to sleep in a tub and never wake up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And as he's going through all these verses questioning the murder and the killings and the insanity you have that layer on top that really drives home what it must be like to make you feel this way i don't know i give it a 4.1 i kind of like like what this song is trying to be and i really respect it like i really do i think it's super artistic and that's what i'm loving about this album is how every song has managed to show me this new creative piece so far of isham and it's cool even if the effect isn't always perfect from like a delivery. But then again, if he had written this and recorded this with today's technology, maybe it would have been fucking next level. So maybe it was a technological limitation. Um, I don't find any of the rhymes are like super over the top in terms of shocking me or anything. But like I said, I like emo music. So a lot of this isn't necessarily (laughs) new to me, but like, I do enjoy how blunt it is. Like then the voice will whisper and they start to scream. I grab my head in pain. I grab my gun again. Could it be I'm just lonely or just going insane? I lay my head on the pillow inside a bloody bed. I got my guy in my hand, man, I'm going to kill these voices in my head. And I love that extremeness, right? I love how blunt that is and i love the fact that like people feel that shit and are willing to talk about it because again i don't i feel like it's an underrepresented thing in in music in a serious kind of way outside of emo punk rock you know right so i like that that this isn't about like fucking flamboyant haircuts it's about like gritty shit but the consequences of it in a more explicit way and i dig that anyway how do you feel about this one? Um, so, I mean, this is just, uh, I mean, already this is like song four, but it's like already another song about like, you know, hating himself, wanting to kill himself. I mean, there's, you know, it's not necessarily like the nicest topic, but the song itself is like enjoyable to listen to. Um, and at the end of the song, we have him, you know, killing himself or shooting himself um, again. I mean, it was good. I liked, I mean... The, I don't know, the message or whatever didn't really bother me so much. I mean, I did find it was like, you know, like you start like nodding your head right away. You just get into like the beat, or at least I did. Um, I found it enjoyable to listen to, so I gave it a 4.5 on 5. That's fair. I honestly didn't expect Bonnie to be given such higher grades than me throughout this <laughs> one. I really like this album. <laughs> no, I mean, the thing is, I really enjoy it. A lot of it, maybe it was. It's just the mixing. Maybe it was the headphones I was on was a mistake. I don't know. Maybe it was just something like that. I I used the wrong headphones. Now I feel like I missed <laughs> whatever. Let's talk about how there's no singing slash misery at my funeral. And at my funeral. <laughs> okay, I really like this song. I really fucking dig this one. This one, it's just cool. It's just funky. And the premise is so interesting, mm-hmm. right? Like, no singing at my funeral. I can't stand to see you break down. So when I die, place me in my coffin face down. Don't want to hear no preacher preaching all that razzmatazz. Place me face down so you can walk and kiss my black ass. And I kind of like... I, have the, I think he also says that he wants like the casket to be open so that everyone can or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Leave me butt naked, but don't make it a close coffin. Because if you do, I'll come back and haunt you kind of often. And I kind of dig that. Like, so... There's no singing thing. It's like the beginning. It's him kind of like plotting out his funeral. We've heard about how he's killing himself. So now when he does kill himself, he wants you to know about his funeral arrangements mm-hmm. and his ideal shit. And he does it with his own little twist as we have seen here. But like he hears people singing sad songs at his, his funeral and he can hear the preacher saying good things about him. And he's like, wait a second. This isn't what is appropriate, you know, like people crying as they're reading it. And he hates sad songs. Yes, doesn't he want says to know that. singing at his funeral. There's a little interlude and you kind of hear normal funeral stuff. Uh, and then it's the same old stuff in verse two. And it's kind of like, you know, he's building up like this. They're still doing it. This is pretty bad. This is so standard. Oh, now that I'm dead, you're all feeling like this. And then verse three. He gets up as a fucking he zombie. Kicks it up a notch. And he goes twice as fast and he just basically kills and goes fucking nuts on everybody and comes back. And 
it's just like you can just you can just picture like the scene almost like it's a movie how he like spins I, out this I can just see like people just like instantly just like breaking it down dancing like like <laughs> I I don't know and like just like freestyle dancing like spinning on their heads and shit like that like it's just like like that it just makes you want to dance like the second it comes on it's funky it's so much like you can just like see it in your mind the second you hear it like people dancing and or at least I I could um I, yeah I really liked it I, I thought it was great. Rhyming's pretty solid. He comes in like ups a daisy time for me to get up, get lit up when I test shit up. Ain't no singing. Get, to get that shit straight. I, I think that's what makes this song special is that it's really like if people just didn't sing and respected his funeral, he wouldn't have had to have rise from the dead naked to rain his rain <laughs> because he's naked. Don't forget that. I really enjoyed okay, this. This was fun. This is like I, I I felt like everything was really balanced on this. It was really strong. Or maybe I was just getting used to the sound of this album by track five. Sometimes that happens. Either way, I gave it a four point five. I was into this one. I four point five it, as well. I plus this shit on Spotify. I knew this was a song I'm coming back to again and again because it's hilarious. On top of everything else, he's funny. Like he's not just dark. He's got a good sense of humor that I can fucking get behind. You know, like yeah, I would love this sure. guy to work with Matt Stone and Trey Parker. <laughs> anyway, uh, Jackie's a bit of a cum slut. Jackie. Jackie sounds pretty fun. I'm not <laughs> gonna lie. I mean, <laughs> let's be real. Uh, so I'm, we just switched topics. We are yep. no longer with the death and shit. We are on. We're over that. Now we're talking about a dirty girl. A little. Uh, cum slut we can call her it's, it's not really like trying to be derogatory this is the picture being painted for me yes because for some reason she, she just likes to give h-e-a-d and uh he uses her but she told her come taste good to him that's classic so drink it drink it drink it till your this mouth is not stinking monetized. when i think i'll <laughs> uh, do that cover the second i saw the cover i'm like Nope, it's not happening. <laughs> um, so give me job and watch your job break as he's shoving his dick to the back of the throat. Um, I love this song, man. It's like you just can picture that he just met this girl and she just loves it. She just wants his dick all day long in her mouth, the back of the taxi or whatever. She could be a freak. And it's Jackie, 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 oh, Jackie, Jackie. And I'd be like, Jackie, Jackie, oh, baby, Jackie. She was like that, too, is all I'm trying to say. <laughs> this girl sounds lovely. This song is really fun. It's really, it's a bit crude. but I also, Just a wee bit. <laughs> a little bit crude. I can see how maybe some feminist of today might not be down for this track. I'm giving it a four and a half on five. This is fucking great. I really, like, It's it's just like... It's the perfect break from the suicide kill myself fucking craziness, right? Like you get this transition, so you get a little giggle, a little laugh, think about something a little bit different, you know? And then maybe maybe suicide gets his dick hard, and that's also part of it. I don't know. I'm just kind of stretching there. But still, I like this. I love the chorus. I love the repetitious, like, oh, Jackie, Jackie, Jackie. He's just panting with <laughs> fucking joy. It's so good. Um. As a feminist of today, <laughs> I'm I'm all for Jackie. Girl, you do you, man. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I was saying I could see how like, I'm, I have others, no problem with her. You, if, others. If she is the one that really enjoys it. So I mean, that's true good for her. You go, you do you, man. Um, so this is clearly about um, a girl who enjoys giving blowjobs. Um, there are some slurping sounds, so if you do not like that, don't listen to this song. I know there's a lot of people that don't like mouth noises. Um, yeah, <laughs> and like, but it's you know whatever. And the chorus is hype. Like even though you know you know why he's kind of saying it, but it's so much fun. You're like, oh, Jackie, 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 Jackie. It's just fun to keep saying it. I don't know why. And it's like, it's like a fun sounding song. Um, I mean, again, back to the slurping. Like, I'm not necessarily like the biggest like fan of it. I feel like it's gross as a sound, but it makes sense in this case. Like, it, like it's justified. And um, I mean, I think it's a really great song. Actually, I gave it a five on five. All right, <laughs> I wasn't expecting. <laughs> that. I like it. I do. I don't know if I like it five on five. I like it four and a half on five. I like it like a good song. Okay, <laughs> I feel like we're playing the fucking game of death on the internet. <laughs> that was, was terrible. Don't do that. 
do that. I'm doing it. You can't <laughs> stop me. Get down. Lay your cards down right after that, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, how about you start this one off? Because I feel like I talked a lot. And here we got the full Natas group. So it's kind of exciting. It's a little bit more than just Isham. Um, yeah. Um, so, I mean, there, you know, I think it's what. Um, Mastermind, Mastermind, TNT, yeah. and uh, Isham. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it starts off kind of like with like the Jeopardy um, so- song and it's kind of like it's kind of like then like mixed with like creepy voices and stuff like that. And I don't know. I mean, I didn't really like have too much to say about this one, honestly. Um, but like it wasn't like my favorite song, but I think it was clever and it was like well performed. Um, it was basically like try not to die. Do it better than others. Like if you are going to die, like die, like die well, kind of, I guess. Um, you know, like there wasn't really like any, I didn't really care about the lyrics on this one, but like kind of more like the overall like sound and the beat of it was kind of more enjoyable than like what the lyrics were to me. I don't know. That's, that was me, but I still gave it a 4.5 out of 5. It was still good to listen to. That's fair. Um, so when I first listened to this album, I was at work. It wasn't when I do my review. I like to give it like a good listen while I'm at work. Well, as good as I can. (laughs) And, uh, so there's nobody like featured on this on Spotify or anything. And I thought there were only two guys on this. And I could tell that the TNT dude sounded a bit different. But fuck do Mastermind Mastermind and Esham sound so fucking seamless together. Yeah. Like they have such similar pitches of voice to me. And maybe it's just lack of exposure. But damn, do they flow so well together in terms of – like basically I could not – if you were to blind rate me to these two dudes on a track, I couldn't tell them apart. That's how I felt listening to this. So thank God genius exists. <laughs> um, I don't know. The lyrics are fine. Like I feel like it's a bit more murdery, a bit more in the realm of just I'm going to kill you. My shit's tight. Your shit's not tight. Um, I'm better. You're not as good. But like in the, the sense usual. of – extreme killing stuff you know or more crazy shit like i do enjoy that isham uh, this has lines like this is a game come take a spin on the wheel how many cops can i kill i'm ill buck them down at stand still watch me get ill watch the blood spill chop swing off your head i swear freaking gosh man violent j jacked a lot of this shit when i like hear some of this stuff i'm like man there's so much of that that i hear icp doing later on so i guess there's a bit of a, a feeling that but i also love it when like People from places like Detroit like to go at cops and stuff. Like it feels very justified in my mind. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, Russian roulette, cock back and take him. I want me some bacon, so I'm finna cut a pig. Why did dimes to split your wig? Fuck man, <laughs> like it really is so ICPE. Red rum, red rum, come and get some. Hangman hung by the tongues when I sung. Like it's pretty solid shit. It's really well done. It's got this great flow. I do think TNT is a little bit of a step down, a little bit of a buzzkill compared to the other two. I wasn't as into him. Uh, it was fine, but he also had a very small part on the song compared to the other two. I like the fact that it flips between you guys the whole way through. I like the fact that they're they're just able to be so engaging and, and alive when they rhyme. I feel like the beat was, was just as solid as any of the other ones, but it ended up coming out to a four for me. Because I feel like it's a little less interesting than some of the other ones. It was it felt like a posse cut song on an album, which I guess it a little bit is, but it's what it felt like. I maybe maybe I misunderstood it, but whatever. I'm okay with that. <laughs> you wanna move on to headache slash wet daydreamer? Sure. With a shotgun, Biddy got done. You don't want none. Know what I'm talking about. Stack- all right, Bon Bon, how do you feel <laughs> about uh, Headache? And then how do you feel about Wet Daydreamer? Um, so in like the first like half of this song, he's basically like, I'm crazy and I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. And, um, you know, I will make your headache. Um, and then, you know, that's kind of like the gist of that. And then in like the second part of the song, um, a different head is aching, I may say. Um, because it's all about him meeting some girl <laughs> and she brings him um, to her place and then there's another girl there and like everybody's fucking everybody and they're like you know basically like into you know they're just crazy and they're just doing whatever getting and then, lots of blowies and then the girls are having sex and he's just watching and then like they please him and then he there's like sex all around he fucked and he fucked and he fucked till I caught my nut and then and then he woke up 
And then he wakes up and he finds himself basically covered in himself. And I'm kind of like a 12 year old boy, if I'm not mistaken. So, I mean, yes. it is what it is. <laughs> um, yeah. it, it's interesting. I mean, it was, a, it was an okay song. Um, I gave this one a 4.25. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what it is. So the first part is he has a headache and whatever and things are whatever and he's just spitting the flows and he's being kind of cool. And I like what he's trying to fuck with your head with like cool flows and stuff. And it's like he falls asleep and has a sex dream and wakes up. Come ready, come. I enjoyed it though. <laughs> I mean, I'm going real deep and real deep is how I go. I like how he does that shit. Every time he does that, it never gets boring on this album. Uh, like Jacques Cousteau, my funky, funky flow. Hells yeah, Jacques Cousteau bars. We need more of that type of history yeah, I rhymes. A uh, hip to the hop and a cop I get dropped. Anti cop lines. Okay. At the donut <laughs> shop with the judo chop chop. I don't plan on fuck around. Get bucked down with a buckshot. Check the, what the fuck I got. Like, it's got this nice flow to it, and then it just flips into that other shit. And it, considering it's Wet Daydreamer, you do get the sense that he fell asleep, and uh, he basically had a wet daydream. <laughs> it was funny. Yep. I enjoyed that. He had a sexy dream. Um, I gave this one a 4.25. I thought it was fun. I thought it was cool. It wasn't as, like... It didn't give me that same next level engagement, but I'm enjoying the overall sound of this. Now, you know what I like, though? Hot booty. Hells yeah. I'm out looking for a TV in the mouth. There's a hoodie. When I whip out my dick, I do my duty. In the All right, Bonnie. <laughs> we are back on to the booty stuffs. Yeah. Sex songs. And it starts off with, like, sex noises at the beginning. Um, I mean, so, I mean, that's kind of like, you know where you're going with this one. Um, he likes the like the Detroit ladies. He likes girls with big butts. He likes having sex in butts, um, but he Who doesn't, doesn't forget like to wear a condom. That's he very makes that fair. clear. And it is ninety three, so I mean, you know, the whole AIDS thing I think was still kind of like a hot topic. Um, oh, so. let's just be real. We got a guy advocating condom use in hip hop. It needs to get its love. Too many people advocate bareback sex, like it's smart. No, maybe there was an AIDS epidemic, or maybe... Yeah, maybe he's maybe, just, like, pro-condom. Maybe it's just smarter to use a jimmy when you're having random sex with people because, A, your penis will not contract diseases, and, B, you won't end up with accidental kids and stories of Abaddon tracks made about you and shit like that. Like, if you wear a jimmy, accidents don't happen. That's, well, not exclusively there's still two percent chances and all that shit so accidents sometimes <laughs> happen but you have a better Much chance rarely. still i think it's really cool that in a song where he's like literally talking about smashing everybody and anything and it's got to be nice and smell not smelling bad and you, know, you gotta he's you know all sorts of good shit going on i do really like you got a pussy in my big digger though don't play the role i know you're out cold because it's kind of like saying oh you got a pussy my dick's going to smash that shit and make sure that you know what a real man, a manly dick is like. <laughs> I really enjoyed the overall sense of this song. It was so fun. It was so friendly. It was really like, you know, he's <laughs> out friendly. there. He's so out there getting it. Uh, but, like, but, but that if the pussy still smell like shit, I ain't with it, huh? It's like that, y'all, with my Jimmy hat, y'all, while I stop. It like that and chase the cat, y'all. These pussies got me selling my soul. And just to make sure Jimmy hat is a condom. I really dig it. Um... It's basically one of the better songs about fucking hoes I've ever heard in terms of just the flow. Like, it's like he took it really seriously. Like, he tried to rhyme it tricky. He yeah. tried to, like, put that extra effort in. Like, looking for a big fat butt to hump. I need me some booty on my dick every day. Squeezing on a hoodie with a trick every day. Like, that, the whole lines are rhyming. Like, let's be real. It's not just shallow, aimless trying to smash lines. It's well-delivered and constructed rap song about trying to smash all the time. And then the chorus is, ooh, my booty baby, hot booty, repeated a bunch. <laughs> yep. I, I mean. Ooh, hot booty. I'm like, I, I like it. I gave it another 4.25. I feel like it's as, it's like this is the, the groove of this album. Like it's really good and rap, really enjoyable. Yep. But it's not next level. It's just enjoyable. It's really fun to listen to. Good beats. And really great twist on the topics. Like, from a content perspective, I'm giving Isham all the fucking love. Yeah. Um, I mean, I just thought it was a good song. I gave it a 4.5 on 5. I, I liked it. All right. Um, the next one on this seminal project, k k k kill the fetus. Is I thought you knew. That it's a seminal project. So is mine. In those times, 
a nigga felt good in the I like that this is like a slower, smooth jam, all things considered. You know, like it's like a good like tempo change to show a different side of Mr. Isham. Well, I mean, he doesn't get all these ladies by like being rude. He obviously like has to woo some of them. So he needs to have some like, you know, slow songs in his repertoire. He needs to be like, Oh, baby, baby, here are the sexy songs. I thought you knew about the unholy black devil dick in my hand to let you know where I stand. There I'm you go. <laughs> Yeah. What else do you think? Um, so, I mean, obviously this is like a sexy song. Um, so he says the cops are the KKK. So I was like, oh, that's kind of like targeted, obviously. Um, he, you know, it makes it very clear that he is not a sellout. He's not just going to like, you know, he's nobody's hoe. He's not just like in it for the money. He's going to like, you know, have it his way or no way. Um He's just kind of, like, into, like, you know, making money how he can and, like, having sex. And, like, that's what pleases him. And then he talks, you know, kind of, like, there's, like, someone else in the song. And, like, um, or he's talking to someone in the song. He's um, fucking their woman. Yeah, and he says, like, you fucked your lady in the, in the butt yesterday. I mean, it, for me, this one was, like, an okay song. It wasn't, like, the best one on uh, the, the album here. So I gave it a four on five. I think it's equally as consistent as the last few we've been listening okay. to in terms of style. I like it. I feel like it's more flossy. It's more braggadocious in a sense. Um, he's kind of fucking your girl and shit. And, but at the same time, first one, so the first verse has him kind of talking about like a girl who he had that like fucked him over and it kind of made him a little bit jaded is how I kind of took it, you know, like, and the truth is hard to find how to let a hoe she loved to wine and die in her favorite number 69, so is mine. It's a good number, folks. Um, I ran through plenty of hoes, plenty of hoes, you know, whatever, so, or whatever, and it's a toss-up if my homies fell through, and so he's, like, you know, I kind of got the feeling she two-timed him a bit, and, like, you know, he's running, I don't, don't know. do do that. Maybe I'm misreading this song. You guys know what to do in the comments, if so. Mm -hmm. I don't want to spread misinformation, as we've been accused of in the past. Um... But I dig it, man, because uh, then verse two, you know, has the cop situation coming on and he's just kind of describing that he's not going to sell out. He's going to say what he's got to say. That's important. And then third verse is my favorite, man. It's just just because I'm fucking your woman's mind. I got to go get my roll on. I got to get my stroll on. I got to go get them on. And once it's on, I'm feeling all right. I think I'm going to fuck your woman tonight because I don't care. I don't give a fuck about how she's kissing your baby and now she's sucking my nuts. Then he fucked her in the butt <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, uh, like, very, very direct. Like, I kind of like that, though. It's what I liked about Scarface, too, that bluntness, that, like, there's no need to, like, find creative, stupid ways to sugarcoat that shit. This nah, is what's happening. you pissed me off, so I fucked your girl in the butt. I made her suck my nuts after she kissed your baby. <laughs> I'm like... Damn, that's man. pretty hardcore, really. <laughs> like when he when he put it like that, it's like it's pretty strong. And so I gave it a four point two five because I dug the way that he like flipped it and like kept it fun and interesting in the way Isham has been doing on this album. And in a sense, it's it's kind of looking at what is evil. That's kind of evil, you know. Yeah. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's cool. I don't know. Are you down with <laughs> OPP? Yeah, you know me. Um, <laughs> not the Ontario Provincial Police. No, and they, they knew what the fuck I meant. <laughs> My understanding is zero. This ain't how. Apparently I was wrong and Bonnie was right. Ding, ding, ding. So uh, how do you feel about <laughs> this track? Um, so like right away, as soon as I heard it, I was like, this is not going to be my favorite song. Um, it's just like something about like the sound of it I w and like the bow, bow, or whatever it was like it's I just found it like annoying and but I mean I guess maybe that's like what it's supposed to be I mean that's kind of what it is it's called like if they say it how so it's always supposed to be kind of like an unenjoyable experience like you know I think that he's just trying to like bring you know give to us I guess um, you know and then he kind of talks about that life is you know, kind of like hell sometimes for him. And like, you know, what when we look around and like what's going on in like, you know, his communities and like around his neighborhood and like to his kind of people. So, I mean, there's a lot of hate and racism and he's kind of saying like, <coughs> <coughs> if this isn't hell, then kind of like, well, what is? Because this sucks. 
Um, you know, it, it obviously like this song has a point and it is like, you know, uh, you know, he's making like a statement here. Um, but I didn't like the sound of this song still. So sorry. Um, I gave it a four on five. I like this one. Um, I, I really respect the politically <clears throat> charged message, uh, message on it. Right. And mm-hmm. that, that's kind of what I felt like right off the jump. Are you woke? Or are you sleeping? The devil's groove is slowly creeping. It's too late. What's my fate? Will they let me in heaven's gates? And it starts off in maybe like a similar direction as the other ones do, where he's kind of questioning all that shit. But um, then he's like knock, knock, knocking on heaven's doors, which is a classic song, you know. But it's a rock song, you know, of a certain yeah. whatever. I see horse fucking on the floors. The fire's burning. The cross is turning upside down. Now I'm learning. Right away we changed, right? Now you got your ghetto environment and clansmen burning fucking crosses. Uh, the devil's in the soup. I drank the witch's brew, etc. And he kind of rolls into religious control, political control, the fact yeah. that white people are jacking cultures and shit, uh, that he's black. Jacking white people. Um, I kind of like uh, the idea of like look at your dollar bill, the pyramid. It's almost like Isham is one of the earliest rhymes I've now heard that kind of comes off like Illuminati bars. Um, I do really appreciate where this is coming from. Um, I kind of also like the second verse the most. Um, Washington Redskins, Blackskins, let me in. Very strong start. You know, it is still a fucked up team name. Uh, Welfare in D.C., the president says, vote for me. If I do, it seems odd how one man becomes God. White House, white man. And keep in mind, this is 1993, so Clinton, I think, is just taking office now at this point. Um, his plan, his master plan is to kill off the black man, Jewish man, <coughs> China man. I was like, wait, Jews got up in here? I felt so included. <laughs> I'm Jewish. And I was like, he just said, yeah, Jews are getting attacked too. I might have tried and play it off like the minorities or whatever. They're the same. But it was really cool that Isham included my people in his group of people that are going to get killed off by the white man. That was nice. I appreciated that. It was just unexpected. War sucks. Big bucks. Tell me they don't give a fuck. And that's true, man. That's just facts. Like, that is what it is, but they don't care. There's money up in that shit and all that other stuff. So I really enjoyed this track for the tone of it. It was very slow-paced again, like constantly like this, that, this, that. Now, it's basically it wasn't trying to be tricky. It was trying to drill home a real message. Yeah. And I appreciated that. I gave it a 4.25 because it was a little lackluster. But aside from that, it's fucking dope. Uh, you may now say the My name understanding of the next... is zero, and that's how I fucked up the last time, okay? <laughs> because his understanding is zero. I like this song. Do you like this song? It was all right. I gave it a 4.5 right off the jump. High energy, fun beat, just great rhyming similar message to shit we've been talking about yeah but a little more on like again they got some political shots like my understanding is zero for the simple fact i'm not a hero and born broke beat up and always acting evil and i like that like his it's almost like this is the world i'm in i was born to be evil and it's unfortunate but true and if you consider the song placement of the last track it's very much an environmental issue of where he's coming from i'm playing for keeps i gotta carry my shank keep my hand on my thang while i'm checking my bank i got nothing to lose but i'd rather be six feet deep i sing the blues because i'm deep but i don't sleep and none of that's like new or anything in terms of like concepts but it is kind of the normalest shit Isham said maybe on this album so far in terms of his life and description and I kind of like that mm-hmm. um, I don't like the fuzz I believe that's the cops yeah, and I'm course. like was not was and if I was not then I was not or will be you better murder me man I'm telling y'all to kill me I'm like there we are there's the Isham coming in a little bit more of a death wish and I just like how it flows in um, I like how the idea is is like he doesn't know anything because of what he is and how he's maybe perceived by people so the assumption is because of him being bored, maybe a black dude in the hood, he can't understand anything. And so it's almost like this self-fulfilling prophecy that turns you into an evil type of thing. And I dug that general premise. Four and a half on five. Short, sweet, dope as fuck. Yeah, it's only like a minute 25. Um, so basically he does this kind of, you know, he goes about killing people um, and he has no understanding of all these like crazy and shitty like circumstances. 
that people um, who grew up in the ghetto know because, like, you know, they've, they're have they living through all these, like, you know, you know, a lot of shit. And, like, you know, he's kind of saying, like, life is unfair a little bit, and um, which it is. And, um, you know, he's just kind of, like, he just doesn't understand why he's kind of, like, in this place, in this spot in life, and, like, why all these terrible things are happening around him and, like, why, you know... You know, it was in the 90s in, in Detroit. I can't imagine it was that great. And there's no Google um, yet. And there's no Google. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was another one with, like, a, a good message for sure. Um, but for me, not, like, one of my favorite ones necessarily on this album, but a strong message I took away from it. So I give this one a four on five. All right, let's talk about perpetration. Okay. Back in the day, I had Adidas top tens, pony down. So there are some folk out there who are perpetrating things about themselves that may not be so true. As an example, you might be saying you're getting some pussy, but you're really jerking your dick off at home. (laughs) That's how he starts off the song. And I think it's something a lot of people are familiar with. Perpetrators who claim to be getting someone they're not. See people be fronting and telling lies to the hoes, and that's how it goes. Well, I suppose. So we get the idea that True. that's where the tone of this song is going, with all these people who are faking the various things. Um, they like it, they want it, they shake it, flaunt it, tease them and skeeze them. And some never please them. Be lying, perping, and trying to be the coolest. I think is foolish. I think it's foolish. It's just died. Perp to hose and you don't know why. For goodness sake, for your sake, for anybody's sake, you fake. And I like how the escalation here is your fakeness ended up with you dying. Like there was no gradual. Nope, you are fake. You chose to lie in a bunch of other shit about this, that, the next thing. And you got punk, son. You is dead. Yep. Ha ha. And uh, <laughs> the song flows through with that. And I, it's just kind of like... Be real with him. Don't be fake with him. And if you're fake, there are going to be consequences. But it's um, also like the shit like, and I ain't fronting. I ain't fronting on that hoe shit. You saying, oh, shit, just because I know shit. Pussy's like cracking and I'll have it hooked, have it slip. Shit gets overlooked. So it's almost like it's not just you being fake, but it's also you being a fucking moron and letting chasing women and other things over the correct things. And there's nothing wrong with going after a lady here and there and doing your thing within the rules that are in your life. But like <laughs> you also shouldn't have it be the only priority and whatnot. And I, and I dig the overall sentiment of this track. And I like how, like, we've gone from, like, psycho Esham into, like, lesson giving Esham in the middle of this yeah. album. Like, there is this transition. And on the real, ICP did the same, does the same type of shit, too, with their ethical slipping ins and stuff. I like it. Uh, so, yeah, 4.25. And that's what I gave this one. I'm cool. Gonna- um, I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not going to say like everything you said. I'm just going to wrap it up again. Um, so basically, you can't trust ladies or gentlemen. Um, either everyone is out for themselves, and um, that's kind of like what I took away from it, if I'm not mistaken. Um, <clears throat> so again, like this one was like not one of like the better ones for me, but like you know, it's not a bad song either. It's it's an okay song. It was good. I give it a four on five. That's fair. Let's talk about more sex with Freak Freak Nasty. Nasty. Classic lines. If you bring the pussy, everything's a go swell. I got the condoms. Always got to bang with him. Bitches, I'm banging him. Break out the magnum condoms because I'm not dumb. And if you don't use a condom, you dumb. Yep. Those might be my favorite lyrics on the album. And I like that shit. Yo, rappers need to be telling people to use condoms. Yep. <laughs> Especially with all the girlfriends they're fucking. Like, you're basically <laughs> banging other dudes' girls all the time. That's like asking for some shit to go bad. You best be using rubbers whilst you use fornicating with everyone else's girlfriend, as hip-hop does these yeah. days. Um, freak, nasty, freak, nasty, <laughs> freak, nasty, freaks, nasty. I mean, yeah, it's... I could see how it's, like, funny in the right context. I could see how maybe after a bit of some of the devil's lettuce, this is quite an (laughs) enjoyable. I thought it was an appropriate one. It's a little bit enjoyable to bump along to this 
but I can't see it being that great without a significant amount of the devil's lettuce in -hmm. terms of the whininess of the tones and stuff. But it's fine. Um, Do you know what? Because I know how. Ain't no kind of frontin', honey. I want the cunt and money. I didn't eat breakfast, but I'll take a little nuttin', honey. I know your booty's (laughs) round. I got no cooties, ho. If we get busy, then I got to put my foodies down. I He's mean, got no cooties because he uses a condom. Look, I'm, I'm, it's not like there's anything that's substantial. It's got a fun little beat, a nasally, whiny little singy thing. You're either going to love this shit and think it's great, or you're probably not. I gave this a four. I understand why it can be funny and good. It's not my favorite sex song he's done on this album. No. I do love the condom part. That's a standout, and that is totally awesome. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, this is basically about a girl that he wants to, like, have sex with. Um, it's not the best song on the album or anything. I found kind of also, like, the the rhymes to be kind of lame, and I found even the beat to be kind of lame. Um, you know, again, I like the fact that he, you know, talks about the condom, and if you don't, you're stupid. I gave this one a 3.5 on 5. There's not much more to say about it. Um, let's talk about... A song featuring Mastermind again. Do you know Head. what the song's called? Headhunter. The song's called Headhunter. This is fucking fire. This is <laughs> awesome. This really reminded me of some ICP shit. Uh, and I guess because like, I know more ICP than I know Esham. Obviously, I'm giving Esham the props for the seminal nature of his work <laughs> but i fucking love this man they bounce so well together they flow so fucking well man and right off the jump like, i think i need some therapy my mind is playing tricks on me i see everything in 3d i bust a shot at mickey d i looked inside his head again fill him full of lead again oh the flow's good we're back to like rhyming entire phrases with each other again and it's got like ugh, lines like crack a jack killer killer Cracker with an axe. <laughs> and I love shit like that. Better duck in a buck or you're getting waxed. Not that I'm encouraging you to kill crackers. But, like, I kind of <laughs> like the overall flow of the sound of it. Like, it's really cool. You don't hear a whole bunch of that. Um, there's a lot of killing white people in this song. I'm yeah, going to throw it yep, out there. Yep, just, just I smooch. get it. It's cool. <laughs> uh, I'm ready to get away with you. I'm in a daze. I'm going to get you. This is Mastermind. Spit you. Slit you. Aggravations for the world coming down. I'm stopping for a cracker because he down to clown on me. Oof. I'm like, I don't think they were taking shots at the ICP, but if this was in 2018, I would feel like that was a subliminal at the ICP. I'm just I'm just fucking with y'all, okay? I'm just trying to have some fun here tonight. <laughs> um, I'm bad at fun. But I like this song. I like how it fucking comes in, and it keeps up that consistency. They're fucking strong. I think I need a shotgun pop, and I got one devil on the ground, scattered brains all around, pulled a trigger, because I'm a grave digger, head hunter, wig splitter, slate preacher, catcher, going to wet you with a butt. She's got this aggressive energy. This is kind of like what I was hoping that other feature song would have been. This okay. is like the whole step up. It's the whole hard-hitting shit, and it doesn't have TNT there. Ooh, I wasn't as big a fan of But I gave this a four and a half on five. There's all, like It's just fun. It's just a really good, aggressive, like hard-hitting, descriptive song, and great flows, upbeat, all the good shit. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so yeah, we have Mastermind featured again, as you already mentioned. Um, and like they're just kind of like, you know, running around cutting people's heads off. And um, that's pretty much what's going on. There's a lot of murder and violence and whatever else. Um, and there's like this like high pitched noise that goes on throughout the song, which I wasn't necessarily a big fan of. Um, and then this it, the song ends um, with like kind of like the replaying of like, uh, memories of abuse like, ha- like playing over and over again and made me wonder if like maybe he was having like memories of abuse or like if he mm. was abused and like if there was like something you know kind of lingering there in terms of like his mental illness or like whatever he's struggling through or whatever um i was not as big a, a fan of this song as you were um, I, I said uh, I give this a 3.75 for me like it Are was you not okay. okay with going after some honkies <clears throat> no i well I mean, not even, like, the topic matter. Like, just, like, the sound, the overall sound of the song um, I wasn't a big fan of. Um, I found it kind of like a skip over kind of a song. So Not even. My bad. You know what? Let's talk about a fucking title track. Yep. Kill, Kill the, the fetus. fetus. How do you feel about this one? Um... <clears throat> 
Yeah. Start that again. <coughs> Bonnie, how do you feel about this one? Um, the world is evil and awful, really. Um, I like the line, um, Mother Earth is pregnant for the third time, which starts off like at the beginning of the song. I thought that was really interesting to think about that. You know, we talk about Mother Nature and like how she becomes pregnant. So I thought that was kind of like interesting. Um, and then basically like um, he's just kind of telling whoever's pregnant, or, you know, obviously maybe Mother Earth or like, you know, some, you know, somebody that he knows uh, that is pregnant. Um you know, just to kill the fetus because the the world is full of terrible um, people and terrible things and you can't even afford to have the kid, which is like, you know, you know, a, a, something that a lot of people have to think about as well. Um, and then life is not a choice. Death is the alternative. Um, and then there's another line or like, or should you let it grow up in this fucked up world that we live in? And like I think that that's like a tough thought, but that's not an unrealistic thought. I think a lot of parents question like the kind of world that their kid is going to be brought into, and like if it's going to be like a terrible world, if they're going to be struggling. I think that you know it's obviously like a concern for like any like you know normal parent. Um, so I thought that that was like really interesting. I mean, it was well done, and I really like the song. I give this one a four point five on five. So I lo- I really like the concept of this. Mm-hmm. I mean. It kind of starts off like, you know, looking in a very general sense, you know, life in general is kind of pointless. So it's not even worth letting your kid be born because at the end of the day, it's fucking terrible. Yeah. But I think it's a little more specific than that. I don't think it's just you shouldn't have kids and in all cases you should kill the fetus. No. Because you start to get more like... You know, in the second verse, the baby's premature. The mother is a whore contemplating suicide. So what you waiting for? I think I heard it kicking. That's a normal state. So like the whole second verse is kind of talking to the mom a little bit, pointing out, you know, you do you really want this kid? But you also get kind of get the feeling that this is a mother who has a kid they don't want growing, who is coming from a really dark circumstance, who can't support this child, and as a result will be bringing this child into a hell comparable. So in a sense, is having that kid evil? So you should kill the fetus. Yeah. And I thought that was fucking deep, man. I was like, there are a lot of people who have kids that you kind of look at them and are like, should you have had kids with your no money and drug addictions and this and that or whatever? And I'm not I'm not trying to cast judgment. I'm just trying to comment on the questions being raised in the song, which I thought was really interesting stuff to think about. And then I really like how in the third verse, he kind of like sticks it at the dudes a little bit and shows that it's not just the chicks who have these questions. It's your fucking problem, too. Like the planet's really fucked. So now you're kind of stuck. You should have thought about it before you busted the nut. It is a lousy world. I live a lousy life. I think I'd have stabbed you in the stomach with a knife or whatever. And then it's almost like encouraging the guy to go and induce this miscarriage situation to like end it because what are the consequences of what you've done? It's really dark. The chorus has, like, a lot of sampling. And then Esham just being, like, kill the fetus. Like, over, like, he's that voice inside of your head now telling you what you should be doing. I think this is the best song I've heard so far. For real, like, all the way through this album, this one is the most standout. Like, philosophically, it's the most interesting. Yeah. The rhymes are really slow and, and steady. But in light of the subject matter, I think it's important to have that kind of pacing he took. It has It, it is dark. It's dark as fuck. It's supposed to be. but It's, it's dark it's and hell well, is hot. But it's well executed. It's a 4.75. I'm not a huge fan of the chorus. I'm not going to lie. I can live without it. I get it. It's not my favorite kind. Had the chorus been a little hyper to me, 5 on 5. Well, don't blame me. How do you feel about Don't Blame Me? This one's pretty interesting. I like this one. Um, so he's kind of like basically like hating the church and like their doctrine. And like, not surprisingly, like if you listen to any of the other stuff. Um, and he's kind of like too overt and like, you know, he he's too scandalous for like any of like the religions and for like the religious people because he's more about Satan. Um and like, he's kind of saying, like, don't blame him for, like, you know, making some of, like, the good Christians like his music about, you know, which is all about the devil and evil things. And, you know, it's kind of like the world around him. And he's just kind of, like, reflecting in his music. And um, you should kind of, like, he's kind of, like, pointing the finger at, like, the church saying, like, you should wonder why 
your followers are looking for an alternative thought process because life isn't pretty. Life isn't wonderful. And, you know, all these things that you pray for not necessarily are going to come true. So, um, you know, and it's tough. I think, you know, sometimes it's it's def- difficult to be like, you know, it, it's sometimes faith is difficult, obviously. And um, so I think that's why, like, sometimes people are pulled away and interested into, like, more music like this. So um, I like the controversy. I like that kind of, like, story that was going on. So And it's a pretty solid song. Um, I gave it a 4.25. I is a 5. Wow. Holy shit. I thought I heard the best song on the album so far, and I had to throw in that so far because this shit's better. That beat is the best beat I've heard so far. His way he hits that beat. It's the best fucking flow on this album so far. And lyrically, it's fucking next level, right? Like, better reach your children because I might burn them, teach them and learn them a motherfucking lesson, get my Smith & Wesson and blow your baby's head off from watching bullshit, turn the TV set off. And I do love the, 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 the way that it's satirically approaching influences and stuff. And this is most definitely under the big heat of censorship wars that are going on in music at the time. And I can only imagine how a dude like Isham was getting hit up in the politics. So, like, you know, people might have protested him and shit like that. Or Well, I think I read somewhere that, like, people were, like, scared to even listen to his music. Like, they were, like, so nervous about it and stuff like that just because it was going to be, like, you know, it is such, like, an evil, like, kind of topic. Well, and it I is mean, controversial. And are, it is, like, very violent. I imagine that you watching this probably don't subscribe to what I'm about to say. Just because you like or have heard this album and we're cool with it, I'm assuming. Usually people watch our reviews when they like the album, not when they dislike it. True. Um, so people are fucking kind of dumb in general. So stuff like an album like this, it just goes right over their head what the point of it is. And I love how he points out, he just brings God into it. And it's, it's just interesting. It, 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 it Just how like... People will let TV raise an influence and do all this other shit. And Esham's kind of like, yo, it's it's not me. It's not it's not me that's doing any of this. There's a whole environment, a whole infrastructure and ecosystem. Stop looking for fucking excuses. Uh, but <clears throat> at the same, same time, he adds his entire touch to it. He adds a lot of his opinions into this. Like, uh, religion is some hocus pocus, bet you're seeing God when you focus. When that day comes, you got to run for shelter. You're not screaming helter skelter. Damn, you got to turn off the TV or don't blame me. And I love that shit. I love that, like, he's pointing out that, like, you believe in all this weird shit. You allow a lot of these passive things to happen. I mean, people definitely let television and entertainment raise their kids and stuff more Mm -hmm. than they should. And then cast, and those same people are often the ones that are casting fingers at all the dark shit in society, believing Marilyn Manson recalls Columbine and crap like that. So I really love it. I love this kind of punk shit. I love this kind of protest. I love the way he fucking rhymes. I love when he says, get me a razor blade and I might jack a spade or jack jack my dick to a poor porno flick. Nasty motherfucker with the wicked mentality. 13 ways is a small technicality. Great rhyming. Great flow. Great enunciation and skill. Like, this is some standout shit. It's like, if anything, I'm happy he left his best shit to the later part of this album to give me a pick-me-up after I was already in. Because on 23 songs, sometimes it gets a little grating on the yeah. end part of it. But and not like for here. me, like there's a few little dips, but I mean, there's nothing that's like substantial. But this is amazing. So for me, this is great. Um, but Dan, are you ready to talk about some ladies? You still hoeing? I am still hoeing. Bonnie. Talk to us about some hoes. <laughs> well, um, I mean, it starts off with kind of like organ music or something like at the beginning. And then he's just kind of like, I, I forget exactly what it, what it is that he says, but he's basically like, yeah, right. And then like it like switches to like a funky kind of like beat and it's kind of fun. And this is sort of like another kind of like a sexy sort of a song. Um, I don't really have any much anything else much more to say about this. It's it's pretty short. It's like two minutes thirty thirty nine seconds. Um, yeah, I mean it was an okay song. I gave it a three point seven five. It's I mean it is what it is. It's a song about hoeing. I feel like he's kind of saying he enjoys the hoes and he's willing to fuck the hoes, but at the same time questioning the viability of the lifestyle of being a hoe. He's almost like asking like Why are you still hoeing? You yeah. know. Um, is you still hoeing, bitch? You still is you still fucking? It's written on your lips. No pain, no sucking. Project Ho, neighborhood star. You won't get far. I don't care who's hoe you are. I'm like, 
the first verse is kind of like this admiration, I guess, to like what it is, and then the second verse is kind of a bit of a criticism. So like, there's a little bit of a an endpoint of being a hoe in his mind. So it's a little bit that slower comical flow that he has. Just leave the cat alone. There's a cat in here, obviously. <laughs> um, and like. And it is what it is. It's got a sillier, slowed down beat, and it's a bit of a contrast to change up the flow a bit. And so it's good placement. It's like if he's not talking about violence and social political commentary, he's making overtly ho songs. <laughs> it seems to be the two uh, real tones on this album. Yep. But uh, I like the next one a little bit more if we want to move on. Sunshine. But for now I'm just losing my mind Cause I'm caught up in the sunshine I believe ironic is a good use To like describe this song a little bit mm -hmm. yeah, Cause like It's not really about His sunny days per se It's more about the absence of them I would, I would hazard a guess Yeah it's like things aren't like You know happy and sunny yeah, so like each verse kind of explores something else that's not so uh, going good in his mind. Um, he like meets a girl. This oh, I got confused. This is the one where he's talking about this girl he met and she's amazing. And everybody loves her, but then uh, putting in work, doing my dirt, and I'm the one that ends up getting hurt just for a piece of puss, a piece of bush. And now the next man's getting the tush. I guess I'll know next time. But for now, I'm just losing my mind because I'm caught up in the sunshine. So in that first verse. He kind of talks about, you know, getting all caught up in a girl, dude, and et cetera. And then um, his second verse has him dying. He's just dying in broad daylight in the middle of all this shit going on, you know. I'm feeling kind of mellow. Watch the crackheads say hello. I'm just a little ghetto boy, ghetto child, running wild with the freestyle, et cetera, et cetera. But see, I dissed all my homies, so now I'm kind of lonely, but it's all about me. It's too hard for me to see through my jealousy. Somebody caught him slipping, two shots in his dome. So again, there's a bit of a commentary there. It's not just like the main subject. It's a little bit of a, if you fuck around and act like a self-centered asshole, don't be surprised if you get shot and killed. But at the same time, this is maybe some of his, how he is or where he's at with his mind. But it's still kind of that irony. And then in the third verse, we are talking about how his crackhead father, like, steals a bunch of shit and dies. It's kind of, but I got that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I misunderstood it. But it's still in the same vein as the other two, this kind of twisted, ironic tale where it starts off with this sunny tone. But it's really a dark and fucked up situation, and there really is no sunshine. Or yeah. that is what's a good day for him. Yeah, um, so, I mean, I really like the samples that were featured on this one. Um, it has that kind of, like, a smooth kind of a vibe. I liked it. Um, he talks about, you know, like, you kind of covered it. Um, so, basically, he was, like, chilling, and then, like, two guys pulled up. Um, I guess he was just kind of, like, driving around. And then two guys pull up to him, like, while he's at a red light and shoot him. Um, and now his brain is, like, out, you know, and it's sitting in the sunshine. Um so obviously it takes like a dark turn here. Um, and I think it is sort of like the sun is shining and it's a beautiful day, but all these like dark and like terrible, you know, things are happening um, around him in the ghetto and just kind of like drugs and violence in and abuse. Good yeah. Point. You know, it's like all these things are happening, you know, it's because he's, you know, it could be like, a, you know, a very nice sunny summer day or something like that. But it's still like all these terrible things are happening. And like, the you know, how pretty it is and whatever doesn't make a difference. Um, so I feel like this message is clear and the song like hits its target, you know, very well. Um, it's clear and it flows very well. I gave this one a 4.75. That's cool. I gave it a 4.25. As much as I like what it is, I feel like what you loved about the beat kind of was like, eh, to me. <laughs> it wasn't my favorite overall sound, but I do like the poetry and the way he delivered it. Anyhow, uh, my mind's blowing up. Bullshit and hell on earth. I feel like this far in on this album, it's getting harder to like come up with new and unique shit to say. And in the past, we've called this the blender effect. And I don't want to use that in a negative sense. I think this album is consistent. I think he touches on, it's a very similar style the whole way through. This one kind of reminds me of Voices in My Head, but like better because he doesn't actually have the voices talking over it. He goes on through and 
it's the same kind of stuff. He's questioning things. He's um, expressing his frustration. He's kind of calling the world as he sees it. I really like when he's like, I ask myself, how much is my life worth? I'm thinking about God. In God we trust, but I can't trust him. Before I die, the one thing I want to do is have my cake and eat it too. I think a lot of people share that kind of sentiment. I don't, but I think a lot of people do. And like, it's like if you're sitting there in the worst kind of circumstances and you're being told God's going to help you out, it's kind of patronizing in a sense. I don't like believe that's the truth, but I can see how it is perceived that way by other folk. And so I kind of find there's a lot of interesting kind of ideas like that pumped in, like symptom is insanity, might as well do it, ain't nothing to it. But to do it, I'm coming down off a bad trip. LSD, I got the acid. Life ain't nothing but a riddle. Death's on the other side. I'm kind of stuck in the middle. So you can just kind of picture him stone tripping out, trying to like f- figure out his place in life, feeling like he's caught between life and death. And so like it, it's not good or – it's not like – sorry, it's not good or bad or anything like that. It's more like – I can't think of new things to say about a lot of this. Most of the lines are cool. Those are the ones that really struck out to me the most. The beat is very consistent. Um, I gave it another 4.25. It's like, to me, right, the the sweet spot of this album, it's exactly what this is right in the middle of this album, you know? Yeah, I gave it the same same period as you. I gave it also a 4.25. Um, about how, like, violence is sort of, like, his first choice, and um, he doesn't always have, like, time for religion. Um, and this is his reality. I think that, you know, and this is, like, you know, something that I think a lot of other people can relate to, unfortunately, um, that, you know, religion is his first, you know, isn't his main priority right now. He's just trying to survive. Um, and I like the, the lines. Some people tell me that I'm way out of line. I step back and touch their heads and blow their minds. I feel I I'm feel I sorry, I feel I'm ill. I feel I'm real. I feel I'm dead. I feel I died, but I'm still alive. The only problem is is life living, you know? So it's just like he's just struggling with, like, living, you know? It would be so much easier for him to just die, but he's just trying to, like, survive and do whatever it can. he can to, you know, stay around. Um, so this song is catchy, and there are some, like, good moments in it, but it's not, like, a, a top-notch song necessarily. Um, the beat is grimy, like I found, like, especially in this song, but it is kind of, like, as usual, you know? It's kind of like a whole, you know, grimy album. Um, so I give this one a 4.25, like I said. All right, let's talk about Get On Down. All righty. But I just kick jams, make you say amen. I got a G-E-T. I feel like this is his, like, take on an old school, funky, dancey kind of song. Okay, yep. And uh, I just got to point out, I can't stand the skipping that he does like there's like he skips it a whole bunch of times i don't know why he did it i don't know if that was cool i don't understand (laughs) but it really fucking annoyed me and that was probably my biggest grievance with this track that first verse is really not fun i don't know like i don't know if that was a thing people like just fucked up the skips i know eminem's done it a couple times i don't like it that much i don't know if that's a seminal move but uh cut that out it sounds pretty fucking nice it uh it kind of like I like I don't give a goddamn about radio play because I do what I want to do anyway. I can slip my wrist if I want to, but it's I mean, you know, it's kind of like usual. It's just kind of like a funner version, like a more flowy party version of it. You know, like pump that shit up. You could die, and I really wouldn't give a fuck. I honestly say I don't give a fuck about nothing but getting paid. Take it how you want to take it. Money, make it how you want to make it. Like it's nothing substantial, but it's dope. It's really fucking fun to listen to. I really love this beat. I really think it's cool. But that first verse fucks me up. So I give it a four <laughs> on five. Ooh. And I would have given it a higher mark. But I can't. Because it's like four parts of the first verse that skip. I'm like, they don't do it again for the rest of the song. Okay? It doesn't happen again. Now, maybe that's just what got uploaded to Spotify. And the, it, was, it was ripped from a CD that had a skip <laughs> in it. I don't fucking know. But I didn't like it. So. Oh, okay. Whiny McWinester. Uh, <laughs> so uh, for me the first thing that like caught my attention on this song is that there's like this weird sort of noise and it made me think of uh, a squirrel sound like what a squirrel does and I, I've captured it on camera and it makes that exact noise it's fucking weird and creepy <laughs> that's at the beginning um, so I just thought that was funny um, so basically he's like not conforming to anybody else's rules like he does what he wants and he doesn't care that he's broke like he's just gonna like do things his way and that's it. 
Um, and then he talks about acid and like that kind of makes sense because, you know, he classifies himself as acid rap um, that he makes. And I think it was, um, if I'm not mistaken, which I could very well be, um, De La Soul, like was like the sound, something like there was like a, a clip of it and they were featured on this song, I thought as well. Um, so I thought this was very like fun, funky kind of song to listen to. It was good. I liked it. I give this one a 4.5. All right, let's talk about man's number. It was never the devil's number. Read Revelations, people. 666. (laughs) I just get the feeling I like this a lot more than you did. (laughs) I'm just going to say it. Um, well, maybe, maybe not. Do you want to go first? You can go first. Okay, um, first things first, I also wanted to mention that it is, uh, the song is called 666, and the time that this song is 3 minutes and 33 seconds, so I thought that the 333 was kind of like a fun play on that. Mm. Just, I don't know if that was me. Um, so right away, it sounds kind of like the Beastie Boys, like at the beginning, um, but like it more more evil, obviously. Um, and there are a few times where he kind of sounds like BC Boys kind of like influenced and like it obviously was like at that same sort of time that they were coming out as well. Um, so I took a clip of some of the uh, of the lines. Um, I'm I'm a psychotic lunatic, a sch- schizophrenic. I got a tattoo of a dick on my foot, so when I kick you in the ass, I'll be <laughs> fucking you up too. Red <laughs> Foreman, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I thought that was very funny. Um, I mean, it's, I mean, I don't know if he actually has a tattoo of a dick on his foot, but I mean, it'd be funny if he did. Um, <laughs> if that's like actually like what he does. Um, so he can't be killed. He's kind of already dead or he's like the devil. I didn't really quite make sense of it. You know, he's already going to kill himself because he's, or he feels dead on the inside maybe. Um, it's catchy. And like the end of the song was basically just like chanting six, 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 six for like two minutes. And like, you know, and at the end, you know, I could see how like the church does not like him, uh, you know, because everyone's just kind of like chanting, you know, the, the devil's number. It's man's number. Okay. Whatever it is. Everybody else, everybody else in the world thinks it's the devil's number. I don't, I have not read the Bible, so I don't know. But because of an Iron Maiden album cover. (laughs) <laughs> Anyways, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's fun. And I guess I guess by the end of it, you just kind of think, you know, if you think that it's 666 is the number for the devil, um, then it's just kind of like, oh, I guess I w- I'm, guess I'm with him because I was just like 666, 666. It just sounds fun. Um, so I gave it a 4.5 on 5. I did like this song. Uh, I gave a it a 5 on 5. Oh, okay. You win. It's amazing. <laughs> Assholes, bastards, fucking cunts and pricks. That's how you start a song, folks. That mm-hmm. is fucking great. I don't know, man. It just comes in hard and hitting. Like, it, it's ridiculous. This beat is amazing. Now, I'm a sucker for heavy, distorted guitar uses in a rap beat. That is amazing to me. It's a great blend. Um, I dig this shit where he's like, um, I'm the mister with the musical mad shit, manic depressant, but it's still kind of bad shit. I can get funky, too, or break me a guitar like a honky do, but I'm no white boy. I'll slit your throat in the middle of a night boy. I'm like, oof. That's some fucking harsh shit. It is true, man. Yep. White boys like to break musical instruments like fucking morons on the stages. I never understood that shit. Come on. That costs, you know, hard-earned money. I don't know. Maybe it's punk or cool or rock or whatever. I don't know. But I think I like, they're probably just on, like, a lot of drugs but, and they don't even realize what they're doing. I, I, no, I think it was deliberate. I think uh, the who or whoever did it first or whoever did it first. I don't actually know. And then people the just The whoever. <laughs> but still, like, it's, it's a great energy. It's a great fucking hook. It's definitely the man's number, according to Revelations. Um, uh, but like it's it's just got this sick energy to it. I feel like I want to hear a whole album of metal beats in Esham. That's it's so awesome. Uh, but it's a five on five. I don't have a lot more to add. It's it's my favorite. It's tied with my favorite song on this project. It's really fucking nice. Um, but that brings us to the end of this twenty three fucking track adventure of the seminal album Kill the <laughs> Fetus. Helter Skelter. Not to be confused with the Beatles version. So this is apparently a radio edit. Radio edit. And what I mean is, this is not the original version of the songs. They changed all the killing cop lines to safer shit so that maybe it can get radio play. Two songs ago. I don't give a fuck about yeah, being wait on a the radio, second. man. That doesn't sound like him. 
But yeah, I don't know if it was Esham or whatever, but apparently this is the, Maybe the label? edited version to increase the likelihood it could get picked up for radio play. Now, maybe this is just hearsay, but there is another version of the song and every reference to killing cops got like edited. And then I think any of the like swearing got clipped out in this, ver- not all swearing, but like it got kind of cleaned up a bit. And I was just, just a little bit surprised, you know? Because the rest of the album's got cussing. It's got no problems being all full of cussing and stuff. And then uh, this one song is is just a little bit cleaned up. I just hit the button by mistake. But, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I don't have an issue with this song. It's fucking good. It's fucking right up there with the other ones on this project. I just had to be like, didn't you just two songs ago tell me you don't give a fuck about radio play? Hmm. <laughs> and then you have a radio edit to one of your other songs? I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Weird. Let maybe us was, know in the maybe comments. Maybe made without, like, his, like... Acknowledgement or something. Yeah, otherwise, great song, great flow, really good vibes. Um, uh, they apparently changed the beginning, so here it's just what's your pleasure, mister, but there's a much more explicit version according to the lyrics of the other one. Uh, and yeah, I'm okay with this song. It's pretty pretty solid. Uh, I don't have a lot more to comment. I do like that. I'm <laughs> like an iced tea. I'm a killer, but illa. Vanilla Ice on the Ku Klux Klein. You better. Darn it! Me, that man. was all I wrote down too. Because it was really good. <laughs> I, but like, it's like I'm the Tasmanian Devil, Black Devil, that Devil you don't know and who you want to know. I mean, it's a lot of the same. And tra- of Tasmanian shit. Devils are black. It's a lot of the same kind of shit, you know. I like how he goes Voodoo Wicked a lot. That it's just gonna make me think of Alan Jay. But it's pretty fucking great. Um, a lot of the stuff I've said about why I liked a lot of the other stuff earlier on this podcast, which I went into in more detail for those who skipped to the end. Um, it's pretty cool. Great beat, great flow, great rhyming, good lines, cool use of language, all that proper shit. Four and a half on five. I kind of wish it was the fully uncensored version because some of the lines were a little bit dorkier. Like, It's just, you know, when you change cop, like how many cops can one man kill is what it should say, and instead it's how many pigs can one man kill. It's just, okay, I get it. But you <laughs> you, you had like cop killing lines on the rest of the album, so it evidently yeah, it was a little weird. bit of a censorship move it's for like the sake of it. a little out of character, I think. It just felt weird. But other than that, four and a half on five. If it had been uncensored, maybe I would have felt five. I don't know. Maybe that biased me. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like I, like I already said, you already said it, the iced tea line. But I, I like that because, like, you know, I think that maybe he was, like, the iced tea was, like, the first person to, like, make a title, like, to an album like this it's, using, it's like, not, the KKK. It's I, not the same ice. Oh, my bad. Ice T did other stuff. No, didn't he? Ice T prob- wrote Cop Killer, which is what I think he's talking about he's here. Talking America's. Or, that's Ice Cube. Did Ice T do one as well? I don't know. I don't think so. I think you're right. thinking of Ice Cube's America is Most Wanted, which is what we had discussed earlier. I don't think it's Ice T. Hold on. We're gonna now, now we're going to. No, we're not. We're talking here. <laughs> this is, it, I looked it up. It's definitely Ice Cube's album, America's Most Wanted. Ice T did oh, other wait, stuff. Wait, didn't he also do something? I mean, oh, I'm certain he's good. got stuff, but like. I, I mean, he has. I, I, I took it like "Cop Killer" oh, was what he was talking about at that point. I think from it the was one count. of his songs, but not one of his, not. Anyways, wow. Well, I'm anyways, just, it's, I'm she very got wrong. the ISIS con- confused. I, <laughs> so confused. Um, my mistake. I, I definitely know who they each are, so I don't know why I got these. Ice T has talked to me on Twitter. That guy, if you tweet him, he'll he'll respond. He'll like your tweets. He's fucking cool. Ice there Cube doesn't talk to you on Twitter. That's all you He's really need to pro- know like in 2018. Okay. Ice T's gangsta as fuck. Ice Cube's in kids movies. Hey, he's still he's still gangster. Anyways, um. Let's just skip over all of that. Anyway, so, like, uh, the song is basically about, like, violence and murder. But, like, the hook is super catchy. Um, The song is kind of, like, weird and creepy, but it's still really good to listen to. Um, I say good stuff. This one's a 4.5. Same as you. Fair enough. Um, We're going to wrap up, then. This whole album as a whole for me is a 4.35. I feel like, in some cases, a little more polish, a little less songs. A little less random hoeing songs. I'd really like this project more, but I think it's a good one. I understand why it's seminal. I understand how it could, how it became influential. There are so many things I heard here that I know I've heard rappers later on using styles. And if we were to like trace the lineage, 
it's kind of like this, but different later on. And that's really fucking cool. So from like a rap history point of view, this was an absolute album that people I think need to hear. I think it's really cool. It makes me want to go listen to more Esham for sure. Like I'm not done. Like I want to go see what he sounds like with better sound engineering, like in the <laughs> later on parts of his career, knowing he's still active. Um, yeah, I thought it was fun. Thought it was great. Listen, it was definitely not as shocking or bad as I thought it would be. It was actually a really smart album, a really great criticism, a really great satire mm-hmm. piece. And I can see how a lot of people are off put by the title and the shockingness of it. But I also think it's a good filtering mechanism to keep idiots away from your shit. So, like, <laughs> I respect that. Well done. Great album request. Super old school 1994. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, so, I mean, I gave this a 4.29 on 5, so it's like an 85.5%. Um, so, surprisingly good and enjoyable based off of, like, the cover and kind of, like, what you you see from it. And you're like, oh, shit, like, this is going to be weird and creepy. But it is. It's really good. Um, I found that his voice was very unique to anything else that I've listened to. And, like, in his, like, songs, you can hear, like, the influences from, like, you can hear like his influence is kind of like filtered into like his voice I think he kind of sounds like different people at different times um as well I mean he's definitely inspired a lot of people and I think like they, you know I read somewhere like Kid Rock and Eminem and like local guys and ICP and like all of them seminal yeah <laughs> and so it is like very like dark and grimy um but I really liked it I would highly suggest um this album especially if you know cuz it's fall and it's like October and you want something that's maybe a little bit colder feeling and like creepy and like you know kind of halloweeny vibe um at least like that's kind of like how i I like to listen to things like according to the season so um (laughs) this might be um a good album to listen to if you're kind of getting into like the creepy colder fall feeling so i'm really glad i listened to it and this seemed to be an appropriate time to listen to it um according to my like doing things that are in season fair enough (laughs) so thank y'all for watching this it's super awesome feel free to let us know in the comments what you thought about any of us if you like this album your experiences with it special thanks to linda williams is mel gadamsey and super old school 1994 the man himself for uh being our patrons we hope you did it justice if you um Join us on Patreon like that. You will have your album here talking about it in the future. Why don't you want us to talk about it? We cycle through that. So when you sign up, you get one, and then you join the list, and we cycle through the people there. And, uh, yeah, it's really amazing if you want to help us grow so it looks less tacky and a little cooler. Yeah, she costs money. <laughs> um, if not, hit that subscribe button, please, and hit that like button, please. But most importantly, please let us know what you feel in the comments. I think that's my favorite part is just learning from the comments, and I'm hoping that I get all the and like hear your stories, stories about like these people it's it's fun it's a lot of fun it's awesome and i'll answer you and we can talk so uh yeah let us know what you think hit me up on twitters and all that good shit it should be floating around somewhere <laughs> have a wonderful week and we'll be back next week with another uh, patreon request Bye-bye. bye bye bye